Hello and welcome to another devotion from New Life Community, Church of the Nazarene. Today's devotion is actually going to be sort of a change in course, and it was inspired by yesterday's 2020 reading, which came from 2 Peter chapter 1, <clears throat> verses 1 to 11. And there was so much that was so good in there and that spoke so deeply to my heart that I thought I would go ahead and share some of that with you. And hopefully it will be an inspiration to you as well. So let me read from Second Peter chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. And we have Simon Peter, or Simeon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained a faith of equal standing with ours by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. May grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of our and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence, by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire. For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue, and virtue with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with steadfastness, and steadfastness with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. That's verse through verse 7. Well, let me read 8. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not going to talk about all of this today. Um, I will probably come back to it a little bit tomorrow and the next day as well. Who knows how long I'll be um, doing this, but... I just wanted to, once again, talk about the amazing grace that our Father has given us. A grace so rich, so undeserved, so free. It's a gift beyond measure. And none of us deserves it, but it is available to each and every person who will receive it. And that is truly awesome. In this very beginning part, Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, Let's just start there. He's a servant of Jesus Christ, a slave of Jesus Christ. He allows Jesus Christ to call the shots, to be the master, to be his Lord. He has submitted to him completely, and he is following his directions fully. That is a great place to be. And that says an apostle, one who has been sent. So he is a servant who has been sent out by Jesus Christ. Once again, Jesus, Yeshua, the Lord saves, or Yahweh saves, or Yahweh is salvation. Christ, the anointed one, the chosen one, the one that had been prophesied, the one who was to come. And so Peter says he is a slave to the Messiah, who is the truth of Yahweh's salvation, and that he has been sent out from Jesus the one who is Yahweh's salvation, and he is bringing salvation to those around him. And he's writing this then to those who have obtained a faith of equal standing with ours by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. I just, I love this. To those who have obtained a faith of equal standing with ours. Peter isn't putting on airs. He is a servant and he is an apostle. He is the uh, what he was the spokesman for the apostles in the early days of the ministry. And many people would perhaps think very highly of him. The Roman Church, Roman Catholic Church, focuses on Peter as the pillar and the one who holds the keys of the kingdom of God and we have all of that wonderful imagery, and yet Peter here says, of equal standing with ours. In other words, 
he doesn't think he's any higher or more valuable or more worthy than anyone else. We have a standing that is equal to his. And it is equal to his by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. You see, Peter recognizes that any righteousness that he has is not his own righteousness, but it's a righteousness that comes from God the Father through Jesus Christ the Son and is applied to him by the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. He realizes that he who knew no sin became sin so that we might become the righteousness of God and that every single person who is entered into Jesus Christ, who has received Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord, who believes that Jesus has paid the penalty for their sins and has accepted washing and cleansing and healing from his name, we all have equal standing in the kingdom of God. We are all equally valuable before God, and we all have purpose before God. And it's we have that standing because it's not based on any of us and our doing. It's not based on our works. It's not based on our righteousness. It's not based on our brain power. It's not based on our muscles. It's not based on what we can do and give to God. It is based on what God has done and given to us. Oh, that is a good word. Then he says, may grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. May you receive more and more and more of the gifting and gracing and peace that you can have through the knowledge of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You only get that if you stay connected. You only get that if you stay tight with God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So today, I'm just going to ask you again, have you been saved by the blood of the Lamb? Have you been washed by the blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior? If you have, then you have an equal standing with Peter. You have an equal standing with um, any of the great saints of the old, whether it be Martin Luther or John Calvin or Saint Augustine or Saint Benedict, or whether it be Martin Luther King Jr. or George Washington, or any of those who have followed Jesus Christ in their lives, you have the same standing as I do before our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And may you grow in that grace and may you grow in that peace. May it be multiplied to you as you gain more and more knowledge and understanding of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That is an exciting thing that we can enter into and that we can receive it at multiplied levels day by day as we give ourselves in service to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As we serve Him in humble, obedient submission to Him and as we then take the message of that good news and of that salvation to our world. We can experience more and more of God's grace and peace as we walk with Him. Well, God bless you today. May you be inspired. May you be encouraged. May you be convicted. And may you go forward in the Lord Jesus Christ.